everyone always is like, God, Chloe's a home wrecker. Lauren was allegedly livid when Chloe was spotted out with her ex, Trey Songz. We just want to say that we hate fake It is so obvious that Chloe and French are dating. Can Chloe ever be your friend? <laughs> you are so crazy. They always say Chloe stole French Montana from right. Trina. I'm but that's there. two times, though. Well, hey, I mean, I guess everybody likes what I like. They think Tristan was still in a relationship with his baby mama. I kind of was seeing Tristan before Chloe. Things ended with Taraji. I didn't know how to tell her that I was falling in love with another woman named Chloe Kardashian. Let's get into it. Welcome back to the Let's Get Into It podcast hosted by me, Sloan. Today, we're taking a deep dive into Khloe Kardashian's messy dating history because we've already known that it was messy, but it's a lot worse than I expected. We're also going to be talking about a few other topics, and I wanted to start off by talking about something that is Kardashian adjacent because I never actually watched their Hulu show, but on Sunday, I had nothing to watch, truly nothing. So I was like, why don't I just put this on? And I watched this episode where Kim actually married her hairstylist, which sounds pretty cute for an episode until I wake up the next morning and then they are filing for divorce. We love to see happy relationships, but Chris Appleton must not have been happy with Lucas Gage because he filed for divorce after six months of marriage. Maybe it wasn't the best choice to have Kim marry them. The episode itself was entertaining because they got a group together, they went to Vegas, and she married her hairstylist. We got to see the behind the scenes look into his wedding. Shania Twain was there and performed a song for them. Chris even revealed that his engagement ring from Lucas was made from the caviar tin that they shared on their first date. How cute. Which, keep in mind, these two like started dating and then a few months later they were engaged and then they were married. Kim did give Chris some good advice because she told him to make sure he had a prenup ready to go and I hope he did. And of course he did because he's not at Kim Kardashian's level but he kind of is. He's very successful and Lucas is an actor but he hasn't been in the business like, you know, his ex-husband has been. Plus, like, Lucas is 28 years old. I believe Chris is 40 years old. So there's an age gap there. It's not too bad, but there is one. And I think that plays into why they are getting a divorce, because they are having their differences, because supposedly Chris is very controlling of Lucas. According to this anonymous post to moi, someone writes, allegedly Chris Appleton leaked to TMZ that he was the one who wanted the divorce, when Lucas was the one that ended the relationship relationship. It is very well known amongst their circle of friends that Lucas had been wanting to sever ties due to Chris's alleged controlling tendencies. And then someone messaged Jamal stating that that was true. So we've got some of the gossip pages claiming that Chris is controlling and that is what pushed their relationship apart. But a source told TMZ that it was not an easy decision for Chris to make, but he tried everything he could to make the marriage work and needed to make the best decision for himself moving forward. And to be honest, some people saw this coming because their behavior in public didn't seem like they were very much in love. And in my opinion, it seems like they met each other, they got along, the intimacy was probably there, like let's be honest, and they just ran to the chapel which is a major red flag and there were so many red flags that it's upsetting to see this end because i love to see like a happy like gay couple out there because you know dating in this community is not easy i saw a paparazzi video of them too from a few months ago back in new york fashion week and i don't know the chemistry was just not there and my red flags started going up in this first video, Chris and Lucas are walking out of a building when Chris asks Lucas, did you get my glasses? And it's giving more assistant than husband. And then Lucas hands them to Chris, like looking away and it's just like, here. I'm not a body language expert, but I can tell that they were not happy in that moment with each other. And honestly, if my relationship looked anything like that, I would probably head for the court as well and file for divorce. So good luck to both of them. Hopefully they find their partner someday. But while we're on the topic of the Kardashians, let's talk about what Kim has been up to because she was named GQ Man of the Year, which was unexpected. That Kim Kardashian, Kim Kardashian got GQ's man of the year? Girl, here she is in her desk. Honey, are those M&Ms? Now, I think the immediate reaction from people is confusion because she is not a man. She does not identify as a man. 
GQ is obviously trying to stir up some conversation because like, I mean, who's talked about GQ in recent years? Like nobody cares about GQ, but they put Kim as man of the year and it gets people talking. So I see what they're doing with this. I'm not entirely sure if I love it. I want to hear what you guys think in the comments below. I mean, it's a cool photo shoot. To me, it just doesn't really make sense. And Kim has been doing so much lately that I'm just confused at like where her direction is headed. Now, it seems like GQ's justification for having Kim as man of the year is because she launched a menswear line. She said, quote, I just wanted men to find out what all the hype is about. And I don't think that necessarily makes her qualified for man of the year. I mean, do they not have like person of the year or like woman of the year? Like everything's starting to get like really <laughs> mixed in together. And I don't know what's right and what's politically correct. And I'm just like I'm lost. But in the interview, Kim delved into her personal life. She talked about witnessing her father, Robert Kardashian's last days with cancer. She said, just because I know how to manage my stress well doesn't mean I don't feel the emotions. If I'm sad, of course, I will cry and feel it. She also opened up about her divorce from Kanye West, saying that she wasn't confident before, but it's a different reassurance that she has in herself now. Quote, she knows she could do it on her own. She knows the power that she has within herself as opposed to thinking that power was in someone else's hands. Now, this interview was a different approach when it comes to the Kardashian content we see, probably because it is the men's issue. So they got a little bit into, you know, the darker parts of her life and things like that and her business goals. So, I mean, I guess she's doing well in the business game and there's been so many products that have come out recently. I saw one where like the bras have like, like, nipples on them and um i i don't even know if like youtube will allow this but um yeah she put out this bra with nipples on them which i saw a lot of people saying that this was great for cancer survivors which amazing we love to see that like a product with a purpose but the ad definitely caught me off guard so let's go ahead and watch this promotion piece that she posted on social media for this new bra with the nipples the earth's temperature is getting hotter and hotter the sea levels are rising the ice sheets are shrinking, and I'm not a scientist, but I do believe everyone can use their skill set to do their part. That's why I'm introducing a brand new bra with a built-in nipple, so no matter how hot it is, you'll always look cold. Some days are hard, but these nipples are harder, and unlike the icebergs, these aren't going anywhere. The Skims Ultimate Nipple Bra. It's an interesting approach. Like I said earlier, I'm a little confused with where her direction's at, but with all these products, the Swarovski crystals coming out, the menswear line, this bra, and just so much more, we're just getting tons of Kim Kardashian everywhere. Even driving through LA, it's like every street has a huge billboard of her, and it just kind of makes me scared. Like, I kind of feel like we're in like, I don't know, this is offensive, but like, you know how North Korea has like Kim Jong-un like everywhere? I kind of feel like that's like Kim in the United States. Like she's just everywhere. Like at least in LA, she's on every billboard. And if it's not Kim, then it's freaking Kylie Jenner. But we're not here to talk about them. Let's talk about our main topic, which involves Khloe Kardashian, because, you know, I feel bad for her, especially with everything she's gone through with Lamar Odom, with Tristan Thompson, like she's been through hell and back. And looking at her history, I, I don't like karma. I don't like really necessarily believe in karma. I mean, I like the premise of it, but like realistically, I just don't, I don't like to put my energy into that because karma is like just, it's actually against like Christianity. Anyways, I can go on a long tangent, but I kind of feel like Chloe has a little bit of karma for what she's done in the past. And that's why we see what happens nowadays. Let's take it way back and talk about Chloe's fling with Trey Songs, which ended her lifelong friendship. Now, Trey Songs used to be in a relationship with a woman named Lauren London. They started dating in 2009 for four years. Lauren never confirmed the relationship, but Trey Songs has admitted that he won loved the actor. If Trey Song's account of the events isn't evidence enough of a previous relationship, then Lauren's reaction to Chloe dating Trey Song's was very telling. So it seems like Lauren isn't acknowledging her relationship with Trey Song's, but they were clearly together and how she reacted to him getting with her best friend Chloe tells it all. Oh God, here's some news. So Chloe and Trey actually reconnected over text as the reality star sent her support because Trey Songs was accused of brutally 
R wording a woman at a house party in LA in 2016 in a 20 million dollar lawsuit an allegation that he denies and Chloe sent her love to him for this oh one of her friends went to the media and said that Chloe has always had a thing for Trey she hooked up with him back in 2016 and they stayed friends even after it was all over so it's great that they are on good terms but Chloe isn't on good terms with her friend Lauren so Chloe and Lauren have been friends since their 20s and Chloe even threw a baby shower for Lauren when she had her first child. Lauren was pregnant with her first child who is fathered by Lil Wayne and she gave birth to her son back in 2009. That same year, Chloe had Lauren as her bridesmaid at her wedding to ex Lamar Odom. Their friendship kept going strong as Lauren split from Lil Wayne in 2009, then started hanging out with Trey Songs that year. So as Lauren went on to date Trey, you know, Chloe and Lamar went through their entire scandal. And after that was over, Chloe went on to go and mess around with Trey, and this upset Lauren. One eyewitness said that they saw Chloe and Trey in Vegas and they were making out, they weren't shy about it and they were playfully touching each other at David Buster's. So clearly Lauren felt betrayed by Chloe and that marked the beginning of the end of their friendship. Arts historian. I have a tough time admitting when something has completely missed my radar. Like the long lost friendship of Chloe and Lauren London. So shout out to my friend Amanda for bringing it to my attention. Anyway apparently these two were once so close that Lauren was a bridesmaid in Chloe's 2009 wedding. And Chloe even hosted Lauren's first baby shower that very same year. They partied together, celebrated birthdays together and were generally thick as thieves until one day it seems like their friendship came to a screeching halt. As the story goes, Lauren was allegedly livid when Chloe was spotted out with her ex Trey Songs, and I would guess she was even more fired up when they were reportedly spotted making out at a Vegas club not long after. Now given the timeline it seems these two stopped talking shortly after all this went down, even though they've likely been in the same room since given they have mutual friends. But I'm just left here thinking damn a broken friendship over Trey Songs. No man is worth losing a friendship over. In response, Lauren went to social media and she posted a video about fake B words. She didn't mention Chloe by name, but she deleted that post because everyone knew who she was talking about. Now, I don't know what was going on with Lauren, but she was arrested and her friend Cassie picked her up and she thought it would be a good idea to post a video on social media. They went on to talk about how they hate fake B words. And again, a lot of people are interpreting this video as shade to Chloe Kardashian. Um, we just want to say that we hate fake bitches. All of them. Yeah. Luckily, Lauren was able to get over it and Chloe moved on. Fortunately, but unfortunately, Lauren moved on and found love with Nipsey Hussle, who I remember was killed and they were together for about six years before his murder, which is just so upsetting that this kind of stuff happens and it's scary. I mean, that may have been the love of her life and now he's just like gone. Because this was such a tragic moment for Lauren, Chloe did step in and she posted in support after the death of of Nipsey Hussle. This article reads, despite their apparent rift in the friendship, Khloe Kardashian still spoke out in support of Lauren London in 2019, the year that Nipsey was murdered. Now, one of the issues with Khloe's post, which, you know, honestly seems pretty kind, is that she also used this moment to go ahead and promote their show. At this point, they were on season 16 of Keeping Up with the Kardashians, and people were calling her out, saying, I hope you reached out to Lauren personally. You guys were supposed to be friends, and I just see you posting about that stupid show. Chloe no longer follows Lauren on Instagram as of writing that post, but she still follows their friend Cassie, who was in that video and picked up Lauren from the jail. Ultimately, I do agree that Lauren is allowed to feel some kind of way about this. This article writes, Lauren is rumored to be upset with Chloe because she used to confide in her with her problems with Trey Songs. It allegedly hurts her that Chloe is now publicly dating her ex who she used to cry on her shoulder over. But this is not the first time that Chloe has gotten flack for dating her friend's exes. Back in 2014, she started dating French Montana, who was still on speaking terms with his girlfriend Trina. So let's go ahead and talk about rapper French Montana, because we saw him in a lot of media involving the Kardashians. I remember seeing him on their show, so he was a big part of Chloe's life for a moment, back in 2013-2014. When Chloe met French Montana, she was going 
going through a public separation from her ex, Lamar Odom. The couple married in 2009, but Chloe filed for divorce in 2013 after Lamar cheated on her. According to Bustle, Sean Diddy Combs introduced Chloe to French Montana. Shortly after they met, Chloe and French grew closer, and in 2014, they appeared on the Angie Martina Show, a radio show where French teased that he was on the Keeping Up with the Kardashians series. Here's a clip from one of his features in that show. It is so obvious that Chloe and French are dating. They are so cute, and he's so sweet with her. All of his friends are so nice. They're so welcoming, and it's good to finally meet them all. I get why she's hesitant on introducing anyone to the family, but if she's out and about all over the world with this guy, there's no reason she shouldn't share it with her family. <laughs> oh my goodness. How are you? <laughs> so this is... That's nice. He ran out of shorts, so he decided to take a t-shirt. Two arms, two legs, same thing. Wait, where is your license? Now let's talk about Trina because she was in French Montana's life and she has a problem with Khloe Kardashian. So French was reportedly dating Trina and Khloe at the same time. According to the Jasmine brand, Trina was close to Khloe and her sister Kim Kardashian and dated French. However, French reportedly stopped dating Trina to pursue Khloe. In addition to allegedly stealing French Montana from Trina, Khloe's love interest after the rapper is also Trina's ex because after she she broke up with French Montana, she started dating James Harden. Trina seemingly shaded their relationship through Twitter by writing <laughs> sloppy seconds. One of Trina's friends went to the media and said she seriously believes that these women, Chloe, sit around and take notes on who she's dating. And once she's done, they swarm like flies. They are there and go to town over the leftover carcass. Okay, so he's a carcass at this point. Trina claims that she found out that Chloe and French were dating like the rest of the world. Quote, it was all over the internet. It was all over my Twitter, my Instagram, everything. And I mean, it's a little surprising when you're living with somebody and they're running around with somebody else. So their relationship was serious because they are living together while he's out here running around with a Kardashian. And when you're with one of those sisters, you're gonna be noticed. So there was no getting away with that. Here's a clip of Trina speaking about Khloe Kardashian on an episode of Rack Rants. So can Khloe ever be your friend? <laughs> you are so crazy. Um, yeah. <laughs> Jesus, this question is. Um, I personally, I was mad as a mug at her. If you would have seen me on TMZ, you would have seen I went off. Yeah. Yeah, I was hot as fish. Well, race. you know what? The thing is this. I'm, I'm one of those kind of women that I don't really like all the way, like be 100% blame the women for stuff that happens. I'm but that's two that. times, though. Well, hey, I mean, I guess everybody likes what I like, you know? Well, damn Skippy. You but know what I mean? but, but, saying, but, but if, she, if she came up to you right now, right? Mm -hmm. I was like, hey, yo, what's up, Trina? You know what I'm saying? Hey, girl. She's not going to come it. up and say that. Hey, she's you never not going to say that. But she's, you know what the thing is? She's always been a sweet person to me. Like, I've never had a problem with her. Like, she was the first person I met out of the Kardashians before I even met Kim. Can she I meet think. your new man? No. <laughs> okay, then yeah, it's not too rolling. That's actually pretty funny because there's a few boys in West Hollywood that I told my boyfriend I would not allow them in the same room because there are just certain people out there as you grow up and you start dating. I, like even my last ex-boyfriend, there was multiple people like that kind of flocked to him after two. I was like, oh my gosh, you shady people, you're waiting for this moment. So I kind of get that. And that's why I think it's really important to try to keep your love like kind of private if you can. Luckily, you, you know, I like to be on camera. I like to share my life, but my boyfriend has no interest in that. And that kind of actually works well for me because some people, I mean, I don't know. I can't imagine dating like another big influencer or like a YouTuber who's even bigger than I am. I just think that would give me a lot of anxiety but i don't know you never know what's in store maybe there'll be a dating show one day but french montana is siding with chloe and claiming that you know she did not steal him from trina he actually made this statement during the jordan woods scandal and it all started with perez hilton throwback to my interview with him that was like episode what like 10 or 7 or something on this show but perez asked the question did chloe kardashian start dating french when he was still with trina and wasn't chloe friends with trina French Montana claims that he was single like a dollar bill and he actually retweeted Perez Hilton and cleared the 
air that he was supposedly single but then trina doesn't feel that way so clearly someone is you know lying about that chloe claims that she jumped into this relationship with french because she was lonely and destructive but now at this point when she was giving this interview she just wanted to be alone but being alone didn't last long because she moved on to trina's other ex james harden so james was dating chloe back in 2015 and trina sent a source to the media to say that Trina has been telling her friends that Chloe can continue to have her sloppy seconds once again. Trina still hasn't spoken to Kim since Chloe and friends got together and you know, they were good friends. Trina says Chloe may be the baddest of the Kardashians, but she'll never be her. Now, of course, we've seen all of this play out on the show, how the Kardashians want it to seem. There's a whole segment where Kim tries to clear their name and compares past situations to a situation going on with Tristan Thompson because he had left Jordan Craig, his baby mama, for Chloe, and a lot of people assume that these sisters have a pattern of stealing relationships. They pretty much make French Montana admit on camera that he wasn't with Trina while he was dating Chloe. And it's really weird how they take this moment and, you know, kind of play out this scene. Like it's all obviously planned ahead of time. And it's interesting how they control the narrative because they're putting out this episode for the world to see. So everyone always is like, Chloe's a homewrecker. They think Tristan was still in a relationship with his baby mama. Oh no, we gotta straighten that out. They always say Chloe stole French Montana from right. Trina. Give me your phone. I'm gonna call French. I need to know the truth of this. The world thinks I, you know, stole Kanye from Amber. That happened years later. I have receipts, I'm gonna show them. But the thing that they always say about Chloe is Chloe took Tristan from his baby mama, which wasn't true. Then they always say that Chloe stole French from Trina. I was never with Trina when I started going out with Chloe. I know, but that's that's the thing. It's like we've let it slide for so long. So Kim got the record set straight and Chloe was very thankful on Twitter for this. I'm sure they all were very thankful. But there are some people out here who do not hold back and Wendy Williams interviewed French Montana and he again denied that he left Trina for Chloe, but she asked the hard hitting questions. Trina is still very upset that French went on to date Chloe, even though French says that their relationships are very different. But again, Trina was friends with Chloe and it's just weird to watch your friend date your ex-partner. Here's a clip of Wendy Williams interviewing French Montana on this. Now, are you still married? No, I'm divorced. Is it true that Trina is the one that introduced you to the Kardashians? No, not at all. I, I think that, um, come on, Kanye, wait, wait. No, I'm going to keep all the way with okay. you. Kanye invited me to the uh, Barclay Center to come to, to, the, to the show. Then so happened Chris and Kim was there. Yeah. Then so happened that Trina knew Kim. She said, hi, this is French. She introduced mm. me to them. But is, is it true that Trina found out about you and Chloe while reading the internet, but you and Trina were still together as a couple and you were double dipping? Honestly, I was never a couple with Trina. Oh, well, what was that? You know, I was going through my divorce. So it's kind of like, you know, I was just having fun with life. And I, I was I was in no, in no mental space. So, you know. She wasn't your girlfriend. She was a special friend. I can't claim nobody after I'm just going through divorce. The divorce is finalized? Yeah, it's finalized. I was reading that you had to do a, a cash payout of $1.2 like million or something? Something like that. So he's trying to deny that he even had a relationship with her, which I think is almost worse than admitting that you had been cheating on her. And of course, Trina didn't appreciate this interview either, and she had some things to say. She said in an interview, we were really not in a relationship. Let's be clear about that. I never told him I was your girl. We were friends. I think the relationship to me starts with a friendship. I think that me and him were kind of on the same page, but different pages. I mean, they were living together, so can we like <laughs> redefine this? He had a situation he was going through a divorce or whatever that was one of the reasons I never really got into a relationship with him I wanted that to be clear and there was a lot of back and forth I was there with French every single day and every step of the way while he was dealing with the divorce beyond supportive I'm the one that told French to step up to the plate like a man and to make the right choice and even though she is calling him a friend as well she's very much defining a relationship even sharing that they've got keys to each other's homes she ended off by saying that there's just some things you just don't do out of respect and she feels like he's been disrespectful with Chloe. As I mentioned earlier and how, you know, Kim tried to reshape the narrative, there was a point where Tristan Thompson was so eager to get this woman, Jordan Craig, pregnant and then when she did get pregnant and started to get close to giving birth, he was cheating on her with Chloe. Even though Chloe acts like she had no idea this was going on, I don't understand how these celebrities like get away with like hiding a secret. I mean, like 
Chloe's got people everywhere. I'm sure she had some idea. And Jordan claims that Tristan was so eager to have a baby with her. Jordan said that she saw paparazzi pictures of them together. And she said that she had confronted him about these women. And he denied even knowing them. Denying that he even knew who Chloe was. This is what Jordan said in her court filing. Tristan encouraged me to exhaust every avenue we possibly could to start a family. Tristan insisted that he would change for our family and tried to get back together on numerous occasions. He was then caught cheating with Chloe and women that Jordan had confronted him about. Their relationship went viral, Chloe and Tristan, and everything turned for the worse. Every day, several articles were published worldwide mocking my new unfortunate reality, and my pregnancy would now become one of the most popular gossip headlines due to the woman Tristan was now publicly dating during her pregnancy. This brought an enormous amount of negative, unwanted attention and stress into my life, and more critically into my pregnancy. Chloe then went on to deny that she had had any idea that Tristan was still in a relationship, let alone with a woman who is pregnant. The reality is that Chloe has picked men that are really not available, either emotionally or not men that are going to be faithful long term. And there's red flags there. Like, for example, with Lamar Odom, he had just left a relationship where his baby had just passed. So there was a lot of emotional issues Lamar had to go through. But I got Chloe trying to marry him up and be all happy with a guy who's really not emotionally available. In this situation with Tristan Thompson, I mean, he had an ex-girlfriend pregnant when he got with Chloe. To me, when a man has a girlfriend pregnant or the baby is too new, that's a huge red flag because he's gonna sleep around because he slept around on his ex. You know, the one thing is that the Kardashians really don't address that. That TikToker mentioned the situation with Lamar Odom, and I thought that we should dive into that part of Chloe's story. Because Lamar was with a woman named Liza for 10 years, and they had two kids together, and she felt devastated that she got a breakup text from Lamar. Chloe was accused of wrecking Lamar's romance with his baby mama, Liza, who he was with for 10 years and parent three children, one who died six months after they were born, which is just so devastating. I, I can't imagine being in that situation. Liza revealed that Lamar, who had given her endless excuses to why he did not want to get married, sent her a text informing her that he was gearing up to tie the knot with Chloe. This caused a lot of animosity in their relationship, and it led to the point where they could only communicate with each other through lawyers. So their son, Jaden, passed away in 2006, and she suffered from depression on and off after that. She said that was a very very difficult time. Around that time, I was dealing with depression, and then I get a text message from him saying, I'm getting married. I knew he was seeing her because they were all over the blogs and the websites, and obviously, I was devastated. We were not together, but obviously, I deserve more than just a text message. Liza and Lamar grew up with each other. They knew each other since they were 15 years old. So, to be honest, I kind of see where Liza's coming from because I would want more than just a text message, especially because they have children together, and when they started getting the paparazzi, on them, their kids did not know how to cope. Actually, their daughter was diagnosed with depression and there was a lot of pressure and the constant paparazzi just threw her off. A whole new life that they did not ask for. So clearly their relationship has been on and off again for years. And Liza did do an interview about her feelings on their current situation. We were cordial um, prior to my son's graduation. Um, but we were cordial, we spoke on the phone, you know, we would text when the first time I met her, she asked me for a hug, you know. So I have, like, no problems with her. Um, as long as my kids are taken care of, I'm good. Have I ever watched Chloe and Lamar? No. Um, I had heard about it in the very beginning, like my girlfriends would tell me, and I kind of had to tell them I don't want to know, you know. I'm living my life, and I don't want to know what's going on on their reality TV show. Um, so they kind of learn quick my girlfriends learn quick and they were like we're not even going to tell them so no i don't watch it now let's switch gears and talk a little bit more about lamar odom but a different woman he was involved with 
Her name is Tarai Henson, and I guess Lamar is accusing Chloe of being the reason why his relationship with Tarai never worked. Now, Lamar is shady here because he claims that he dated Tarahi, but their relationship failed after Chloe came into the picture. Lamar spilled the tea about his wrecked romance with Tarahi in an episode of TV One Uncensored. He claims he carried a picture with her while on the road. He was quoted saying that she gave him inspiration, a black woman working like that that's just as good at her craft as I am in my craft. He claims that their romance ended because he was an immature punk and he did not know how to tell her that he was interested in Chloe. I'm sure Chloe wasn't happy about this interview, but here's a snippet of Lamar sharing his story. I just wish I would have done things different with her. And she was a little older than me, but I learned a lot from her because that was the most significant relationship as a grown up that I had with a black woman. I used to carry a picture on the road with me. Don't nobody know that. Except for dudes that play with me, but she gave me inspiration. You know what I'm saying? A black woman working like that, that's just as good as her craft, that I'm as good as my craft. Just, she inspired me. Things ended with Taraji because of being, me being an immature punk. I didn't know how to tell her that I was falling in love with another woman named Khloe Kardashian. Now let's get back up to speed and talk about Tristan Thompson. And while Chloe and Tristan are acting like they aren't together, in the beginning, Tristan also had other love interests, not just Jordan Craig. Because Larsa Pimpin claims that she dated Tristan before she introduced him to Chloe. Now Larsa has her own issues, but she shared in an interview that she's the reason why they even know each other. She said, I was kind of seeing Tristan before Chloe, before Chloe or any of them knew he existed. I was seeing him, I had come to LA and I brought him to a party that Kim had. I introduced him to all of them. She said a week after she brought Tristan to Kim's party, they started hanging out and we started to see photos of them publicly together. She claims that she's not hurt that Tristan moved on from her relationship with him. She said, it's whatever. I'm the type of person that doesn't chase what's not for me. I'll never chase a man. I'll never put a leash on a man. I don't do that. Lars is claiming that if they love each other, then God bless, move on. She's probably the only person who's been cool with Chloe stealing their man in this entire video, but here is an interview of Larsa speaking on the situation. Well, I kind of was seeing Tristan before Chloe, before Chloe or any of them even knew he existed. I was seeing him. I had him come to LA. I brought him to uh, a party Kim had. I introduced him to all of them. And then a week later, maybe 10 days later, he started seeing Chloe, which is fine. I don't even care. You know, it's just whatever. Like, I don't, I don't care. I'm the type of person I don't really like I don't chase what's not for me. I will never chase a man. Did and Chloe know you were seeing Tristan or dating? Yeah, I'm sure she knew. Yeah, I'm sure she knew. I brought him to an event, you know, one of Kim's events. Yeah. But you, you guys weren't like exclusive or anything. It was just like, hey, just having a good time. Yeah, we were. Yeah, we were just. Yeah. What are your thoughts on them being back together now? I mean, I love them together. I feel like they have a beautiful baby together and they need to work it out. And, you know, if they love each other, then God bless. You know. After Larsa did this interview, Chloe was upset for whatever reason. Honestly, Larsa has been the nicest out of all of this, but I guess she just kind of felt embarrassed. Chloe started sharing a spree of empowering posts on her social media. One quoted saying, you glow different when you're not hating, hurting, bitter, or messy. Another quote read, I cannot express this enough. You have no idea what other people carry with them every day. You have no idea what someone's life is like. Don't create more pain and stress to others. So she's trying to be shady to Larsa without probably trying to upset her. She shared another message that read, sit with women who are winning. The conversation is different. Many fans speculated that these quotes are related to Larsa's recent revelations and that Chloe is throwing some shade. It doesn't seem like these two are ever going to make up. One source told ET, Larsa and the Kardashian sisters are not friends anymore and have grown apart. The Kardashians felt Larsa wasn't bringing the best energy to their friendships and slowly drifted. No one has negative feelings towards one another, but they didn't see a reason to continue to stay close. Which is an interesting perspective because I feel like I have a lot of different friends and there's different friends for different reasons. Like you don't have to be best friends with every single person. Some people are better friends that you see out at the bar. Some people are closer to where you call them when you are in need or you want to tell them something personal. Like I don't think there's any real reason to end a friendship, which makes me 
think that the Kardashians are the bitter ones in this situation because Larsa wasn't even really hating. I mean, she's just calling a spade a spade. I mean, if Chloe is a homewrecker, that's what she is. But speaking of homewreckers, I wanted to end this episode by speaking on Ariana Grande and her relationship with Ethan Slater. Because recently, Ethan was at the courthouse because he had a divorce hearing from his high school sweetheart. Ethan Slater is keeping quiet on his love life with Ariana Grande, refusing to spill any relationship tea while stepping out of court after a divorce hearing. Remember that he cheated on his wife Lily J with Ariana Grande. They were together I guess ever since like high school. They have a brand new baby together and Ariana was able to sing him away from that relationship. Ethan didn't speak to any of the press of course not because they want to know everything but he has been out and about going on dates with Ariana acting like a normal couple. You would have no idea that these two were just married this year and now they're just full on together. I mean I wouldn't be surprised if Ariana is engaged soon. Sources close to Ariana tell TMZ she's been having more fun and going out more often lately. We're told it's clear she feels safer and more able to be in this new relationship as we reported Ethan got we got Ethan leaving court last week after handling divorce and custody proceedings with his strange wife Lily J um and he just he looked pretty tight-lipped um I will say this y'all okay I know I gave Ariana and I will probably continue to give Ariana a whole lot of crap because she did she did like I mean he it was his marriage he was the one it's his fault but Ariana has a pattern of this I don't know what it is about Ariana Grande, but she's able to steal relationships, I mean, even better than Khloe Kardashian can. And we've seen her out and about. She was recently at his Broadway show cheering him on. And of course we want everyone to be happy, but I kind of felt like they would have like stayed private a little bit longer because I don't think like the media has really healed from the bombshell of these two leaving their partners for one another. Here's a quick clip of Ariana leaving the show with Ethan. Have a good night. Have a good night, guys. It actually turns out that she's been to a few of his shows already, and we've seen her in the crowd cheering him on and then leaving together every night, which makes me question how their schedule really works together so well. An insider told People that Ariana has been a big supporter of the production and already has plans to go again. They said that she has seen it at tech rehearsals oh she's been there at tech rehearsals she's a theater kid at her core so she has really been feeling at peace being around broadway it actually looks like she went to his performance with her brother frankie grande who looks a lot like ethan slater and i don't know if that's a good thing i mean in my opinion i don't think it's the best like compliment but whatever you know i'm not trying to be mean here's another clip of ariana in new york leaving with ethan and telling the fans that she doesn't want to hurt them or cause an accident because of the commotion around her and everyone trying to get a selfie. So it seems like Ariana is living her best life with her new man. She gets a new man every year, which I guess is good for her, but not good for the families involved. Her ex Dalton Gomez, though, is doing just fine. They filed for divorce and they reached a settlement. She had to pay him $1.25 million. I don't know why he's getting paid off so steep, but I'm sure he's never going to be able to speak about his relationship with her. But I want to hear what you guys think in the comments below. There has been a lot that we have gone through in this episode. Episode. Lately, I've just been working on my new condo. I've been like putting in some work into it. I'm building out my studio. If you guys have any like interior design ideas, like email me if you want to. Um, I've just been trying to do it myself because I tried to hire like multiple designers and then no one got back to me. So I'm just like, you know, working my magic and my Pinterest and trying to put together this place. But um, hopefully, I'm like, I'm like so over this background. Like, it's not that bad. I need to get more Red Bull for the fridge, but like, I'm just over this background. I'm really excited to have a really nice built-in studio that I can work from and create more content for you guys. So I want to hear what you guys think in the comments below and I'll see you in a new one soon. Bye guys.